right now. Welcome. <clears throat> um, sorry, I had technical difficulties of my own this evening. Uh, welcome to the May 18th, 2020 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, uh, being held remotely in accordance with Governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, Mass General Law. Public comments will be accepted during public comment periods as designated in the agenda. Uh, public can email or provide any other written comment at any time. <clears throat> uh, as we've done the last few weeks during public comment period, uh, I will unmute you and, sh and turn on your camera so that the spotlight will be on you. I find that this is a good way to ensure that your point is fully heard and uh, appreciated by all the members of the audience um, <clears throat> and the board. So we'll move through the public comment period. And we have uh, a difficult agenda, a long agenda this evening, although some things have changed in the last couple of hours. Uh, so I'm going to take things out of order for now, uh, unless board members say otherwise. Um, I'm going to back up for a second here and just make sure we have all the members of the, the board here. Uh, I see Gene Benson. Just go ahead and raise your hand when I call your name, please. Gene Benson, David Watson, Ken Lau, Rachel Zamberi. Uh, I see we have uh, Jenny Rate on, Jenny Other, and Aaron Zorko. So good, perfect. I'm excited. <clears throat> Happy to see all of you. Welcome back. Um, so we got a call earlier this evening, uh, late this afternoon, from Bob Anessi, who is the attorney on uh, the Massachusetts Avenue project. Bear with me for a minute here. I have to bring up the agenda. The agenda should be on the screen right now that I'm sharing. Is it not there? I can't scroll down to see the docket number and, and things. Uh, uh, just sorry. I'm going to interrupt for a second if that's okay. Go ahead. We need to schedule future meetings before we can do anything with any hearing. So um, okay. we need to talk about the schedule first um, okay. before we can do anything else. All right. So in that case, we're going to move to agenda item number two, which is discussion and vote for meeting schedule for June, July, and August. Uh, Jenny, can you let us know what a meeting schedule looks like for those months and we can go ahead and vote on those things? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Don. Um, I was wondering, if, could you enable my record button? It says I have to ask the host. I will have to have Jenny do that, but that's fine. Thank you very much. Um, the meeting schedule uh, for your request uh, is June 1st, June 15th, um, July 6th, July 20th, August 3rd, and August 17th. Um, just looking ahead at June, June 15th is now the date for annual town meeting to start with a rain date of June 22nd or June 29th. Um, so we, we, we will meet and adjourn to town meeting on June, June 15th, um, but that's not a, a date that we can do more than that. So, um, so that, that, that's probably our biggest uh, thing to talk about is just, uh, I, I would like to propose June 8th um, as potentially the either the, the only or the second meeting date in June. Um, and then I, I'll let you talk about July and August. I'm okay with June 8th as a meeting date. Any other board members want to comment on that? That's fine with me. Rachel. Uh, yep. Sorry. I'm good. All right. So <clears throat> take a vote. Uh, Go ahead. Andrew, Andrew. It, it looks... I have on my calendar, there's a public forum uh, on sustainable transportation that night at seven. No, Jenny is shaking her head. Yeah, we won't be having a forum that evening. We are planning virtual engagement events for the tr sustainable transportation plan, but that evening is no longer, that was when we thought we would be able to have a meeting in person. Um, we're, not, we're not going to be doing that, unfortunately. But there will be, we will make an announcement about when those engagements will occur, but it won't be June 8th. Okay. okay. 
I think I'd be fine with adding that meeting if somebody wants to make a motion. So motioned. Second. All in favor of adding that meeting, I'll just do it by roll call. Uh, Ken? Aye. Gene? Yes. David? Aye. Rachel? Aye. I vote yes, so there we go, meeting June 8th. So. <clears throat> Is that gonna be uh, at 7 p.m.? That'll be at 7 p.m. Yeah, we'll continue meetings at 7 p.m. so long as we're uh, gonna be doing them remotely. If and when we return to uh, in-person meetings, we can revisit the time of those. Uh, so the meeting that was set for June 1st and 15th is uh, changed to the 8th, right? Jenny? Is June 1st still a meeting date? I mean, I, you didn't take it off. So I think you're still meeting on June 1st and you've added June 8th and June 15th as annual town meeting. All right. Part of the reason we're adding June 8th is I um, <clears throat> expect to continue some hearings this evening that will need to be discussed uh, shortly. So uh, now. Andrew. Go ahead, Jenny. Do you wish to keep the July and August meetings as they are right now? Or That's where I was headed next. Yes. Um, we can revisit taking those off the calendar at some future date. Um, we can do that administratively. I'm, I'm okay with taking them off, just not adding them without the consent of the other board members. <clears throat> what I wanted to mention is that in July, at some point, we will have a joint meeting with the select board again. I don't yet have the date of that, but as you recall from the conversation back in February, um, we said that we would have some sort of joint planning meeting in July. Mm -hmm. So when I have a better sense of that date, I'll provide it to you. Great. We'll go from there. Okay. All right. Thank you. So that uh, that should take care of that agenda item, Jenny, unless there's anything else there that needs to be talked about or covered. No, no thank you. Okay. Good. Good. So um, moving on, as I said, uh, I'm going to be taking th the public hearings a little bit out of order. Uh, this evening, <clears throat> um, the director can get into this a little bit. She received a call from Bob Nessie, who is the attorney for the applicant for 882-892 Mass Ave. Uh, who apparently after hearing the outcry uh, over the proposed plans, so to put it one way, uh, and taking these things into consideration has chosen to uh, ask us for a continuance and both literally and figuratively go back to the drawing board. Uh, I think that's wise. Uh, I think both the board and the public probably would have had a lot to say about that potential design. Uh, particularly the removal of local businesses, uh, which is a really unfortunate <clears throat> thing for the town and uh, certainly not the way I want to see things redeveloped. Uh, typically, in my mind, things should be left better than they started and not uh, take a step back, even in the name of so-called progress. Uh, I do like the idea of the housing that they were headed toward. Uh, I think that one bedrooms and studio apartments are lacking in town. They can contribute to the housing stock without contributing to a drain on services. Uh, <clears throat> we've heard complaints about. Uh, I'm happy that they were including affordable housing in those plans. Uh, but again, I'm not happy that there was a displacement of four local businesses, uh, several of which serve much more than just that adjacent neighborhood. Uh, one of which particularly offers a lot to the town uh, without naming names, I think we can read between the lines. So um, I will allow the other members of the board to chime in on this. We'll go down the line. Um, <clears throat> but uh, to the members of the public, I will say that uh, this is an occasion where I think we are all on the same page about where a project was headed. And uh, I'm hoping that the applicant can come back with something uh, more appropriate for that location and uh, we've communicated through Jenny that some, some additional talks are needed as those plans come forth to uh, meet those goals. So uh, what we'll be doing is voting on a continuance to a, a future date, which may be that June 8th date, it may be a date in July. Um, <clears throat> we'll get back to Jenny on that, excuse me. But uh, Ken, I'll, I'll give you the first crack at that. 
Uh, well, I concur with you as far as um, postponing this um, um, hearing, but since we already, we, I, I think uh, I could speak, I could speak for the other board members, but I spent quite a bit of time reviewing what's uh, been submitted. And I think um, I, I would like to share some of the, um, my, um, my thoughts on what's going on there just so that they have uh, an idea of what we're, we're looking at as they go back to the boards, so they say. So if you don't mind, if you don't, if you don't mind you spending a few minutes just talking about it in a brief general way, not, I'm not going to get into specifics. I think you touched base, you already touched on. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to interrupt you for one second. Um, just do need to formally open the public hearing, uh, which is docket number 3625. So that's open. Go ahead, Ken. All right. Um, I, I totally agree with you that uh, the proportions of the commercial space and the housing is um, is not, not, not the right proportion. There should be more um, commercial space on the ground floor. Um, I think uh, I wouldn't mind talking to the other board members in a hearing saying, like, we, uh, I think I'm willing to um, look at maybe uh, reducing some of the parking so that uh, there could be more ground floor commercial space and eliminate, also eliminating some of the ground floor units, which I don't think are that desirable facing the back of a parking lot. Um, those are some of the things that I, I was looking at. Um, also, I want them, the architect to look at the, the way they view uh, this building on, on the lot. It's actually a corner lot and their side view, the side elevation uh, facing um, Lachlan Ave, looks like a side view to like an alley or something. It's not a front elevation. Uh, I think they should look at that more closely since it's at a pretty predominant corner that you'll see go either way on Mass Ave. And it, I think it's a simple move that they just take those units uh, that's there and flip it and have the kitchen and bathroom against the stairs and have the living room facing out to an exterior wall, which they can allow them to put more windows in. Little things like that. Um, and also when they, uh, when they resubmit, I strongly suggest that they should uh, show, show the site plan with the surrounding buildings. Uh, it's kind of deceptive, but there's a huge, huge building uh, right behind them off to the right. If you're looking at it from Mass Staff, and it's only like four or five feet from the property line. Uh, I mean, do they block windows or, or uh, light or something? We don't, you know, we don't really know how that works in conjunction. And I think it'd be a better way of viewing the elevation with the other elevations of the street, including the single family houses behind it. So we know how it steps back and so forth. It's just sticking it in more context is, is, would be better. They should also show any mechanical equipment on the roof, the elevator override. Uh, they're not showing any trees out in the street. I know there's trees out there, maybe not as many as we want, but you know we wouldn't mind talking about adding some trees. They're, um, they're putting in a, uh, a re-putting in some sidewalk and uh, a curb cut. I think we also should look into uh, relocating a curb cut so it's safer. The curb cut right now is so far back in that corner um, that as you're driving, I guess, inbound on Mass Ave and you, and you at the curb cut, any car that's parked on the street on Mass Ave blocks that view. You don't see anything. So I think we should take a little more time and look at how we place that curb cut. Um, this other little small stuff there, but I think that was the major stuff that I want to talk about to share with them so that at least when they go back to the, um, to the drawing boards, they, they can, um, you know, take, take some of this into consideration if they want to. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that. And uh, Jenny, if there's <clears throat> an, an opportunity for uh, any of the members of the board to meet with the applicant uh, appropriately as they work on these revisions, I think that would probably be welcome and, uh, and wise. Uh, Gene, did you have anything you wanted to share on this before we go to next step here? I'll just be very brief. I had many, many concerns about um, the project also, some of which um, both of you articulated. Um, 
I think, and the only two big things that I'll add is I, I was unclear about whether they were gonna end up narrowing the sidewalk or not. And I would have concerns if they were gonna narrow the sidewalk. So that's one piece. And the second is I think when they redo the project, they should redo it so they have enough landscape and usable open space. Yeah, I agree. Um, open space is something that uh, so, I'm concerned with. Um, I also just will add, I agree that I, it didn't seem as if there was enough commercial space. And um, I would like to see them get a parking reduction in exchange for additional affordable units, which we have the authority to do under the zoning bylaw. Great. So I would like to tie those two together, or at least have them consider it. I'd also like them to consider um, doing much better in lead than they're proposing. I'd also like them to consider a solar roof, and I'd like them to consider at least one electric charging station in the parking lot. Okay, thanks, Gene. Those are the big things. All right, David, go ahead. Uh, those are all great comments from Gene, and I'll, I'll endorse them. Uh, in addition, uh, I'll just echo what the others have said, uh, that the loss of uh, commercial space, uh, particularly where they were businesses serving the surrounding neighborhood, um was um um unfortunate and uh, I'd, I'd really like them to think hard about how to um maintain uh if not increase the amount of commercial space available on that block uh in a form that meets um modern needs uh since uh as as currently configured it's it's a very it's a much older building with an older layout um I'd also like uh, them to uh, be sure when they come back that they have paid closer attention uh, to our zoning bylaw. And um, uh, I, I won't get into, into specifics on that, but I think there were a number of things um, that were not uh, clearly in compliance with our bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and potentially things they were looking for relief on that we may not be able to grant them relief on. Uh, as well, uh, they um, missed the mark with bicycle parking, both as to uh, the amount of bicycle parking and from what I could see, um, the racks that they were proposing were also not in compliance with with our, our zoning bylaw. And, um, and the bike parking guide. Um, uh, it was also unclear to me uh, what was going on with the sidewalk width, and that that's a very important aspect. So I will repeat that one as uh, that Gene covered. And when they do think about um, about rebuilding uh, or redesigning, rather, uh, if there's any way to incorporate any aspects of, of that existing structure or, um, or um, some of the look and feel on the ground level of, of that structure as it exists in the neighborhood now, that, that might be an, an interesting approach. Um, so those, those were my general comments. Thanks, David. Uh, Rachel, go ahead. I, I certainly won't belabor any of the, the comments uh, that my colleagues have made. I, um, I agree that there are a lot of challenges with the project is proposed, specifically the, the lack of real usable commercial space in a supposedly mixed use development. I just also add to what, what they've stated that um, I'd really like them to take a look at the, the materials proposed specifically, including much more articulation than they had um, proposed in the form of the flat panels um, and, and very flat facade materials um, in their initial proposal. Thanks. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think I think these are all good points. Um, I should ask you as the applicant on, uh, Bob, are you here with us this evening? 
I don't see your name in the list here. All right, I have to take that as a no. Uh, any of these call-in users, et cetera. <clears throat> so. If there's any other person related to this. Yeah, I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone in the list. Um, but I would, I would really like to see a transcript of these comments. However, it might be delivered to uh, Attorney Inessi so that he and his applicant can understand uh, where the board is coming from. Um, you know, I am still going to allow public comment. This is a public hearing, uh, but <clears throat> um, you know, I thought it was important that uh, sort of these general comments, without without knowing what the plans look like when they come back uh, in whenever that may be, uh, <clears throat> we can at least give them some guidance from here as to what might be a more successful, welcomed uh, project. And to, to me, as I said before, like the idea of redevelopment is taking something that, that exists and improving it. And uh, just because it's new doesn't always mean it's an improvement. Uh, and the same token, just because it's old doesn't mean it needs to be kept. Um, <clears throat> but in a lot of ways, this, this seems like a step back for the neighborhood, uh, for that corner of Mass Ave, uh, and for the, the folks that live and work there. Uh, and I would like to see something done um, about the commercial space that's being taken away. Yeah, there's, there's not much, <clears throat> there's nothing that the ARB can do as far as, far as private contractual relationships uh, between the landlord and the tenants that are there, uh, aside from voice our displeasure and uh make the that known um it's it's really disappointed to see things taken away uh, you look at the mixed use applications that have come before us over the last several years and the three that have ultimately come to, to fruition uh we've, we've officially voted on four uh three have actually been developed or in various stages of construction uh and we could disagree on aesthetics but each of those has taken uh, truly blighted property and markedly improved it, whether adding uh, commercial space or additional housing options uh, or affordable housing and uh, not taking anything away from what's already there. And I think that's an important thing to keep in mind as we explore this option. Um, you know, mixed use has been in place since 2016, but uh, it's not something that's been used a whole lot in the last four years to, to really get anywhere and uh, the intent when it was put in place was certainly not to take things away um, so uh, Bob I'm told that you're on um, I'll give you I had trouble getting in I'm sorry okay but uh, I am on yeah my position was going to be that uh, I was going to be asking that the public hearing be continued uh, we have a uh, we've had a lot of comments come in uh, over the weekend, uh, and we had comments from planning as well uh, that uh, was uh, included in the planning de uh, department report that we got on Friday. Uh, we'd like to take a look at those issues, see what we can do to address some of those issues. Uh, so my intent at the outset was to request that the public hearing itself be continued, okay? Uh, it seems to me that there's been discussion uh, while I couldn't get on, my my fault, not yours, okay, uh, already about the project. So, uh, Andrew, can you tell me where we are on that? Uh, are we talking about continuing the public hearing or just what are we doing at this so the point? Hearing, the hearing, I have opened the hearing. I let it be known that you requested a continuance. Uh, the board All right. was weighed in. Uh, okay. All what right. Said, and I think what would, what would be wise is for you and your client to work with Jenny. Uh, yep. On uh, sitting down with Kim or Rachel, uh, yep. and, and because they're the builders and the architects on the board, to try to formulate. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm having trouble hearing you, uh, Andy. Could you speak up? Formulate a plan that might be a little bit more well received. Yeah, uh, and I certainly am not adverse to that. Okay. Uh, we, uh, you know, uh, can I make a few comments, or should I not do that? Uh, I'll leave it to your discretion. Say again, at my discussion, okay. We are in a B2 zone for sure, okay? Uh, it is mixed use, and uh, I understand from comments coming in that the folks would like to see, even uh, planning, 
would like to see more of a uh, uh, a commercial component with respect to the uh, to the building, and we're certainly looking at that. Uh, with respect to whether the building comes down or doesn't come down, I think importantly uh, we should know that we have a phase three contamination study, and that phase three contamination study basically has told us uh, where the contamination had uh, emanated from. It had emanated from the site and it crossed uh, Mass Ave. Now, when we take the entire building down, we're going to go to uh, phase four. Now, we can't go to phase four, I don't believe, until we take the entire building down so that we can take away any of the remnants of the contaminated soil that remain at the property uh, from that chlorine uh, uh, contamination. That's one of the reasons why we're proposing that the building come down. Uh, the, uh, there was an EDR uh, uh, case back in 1988 uh, that talked about building on top of the existing uh, uh, retail stores, but at that point in time, there, well, there may not well have been a contaminated site as there is now. The client has spent extensive monies with respect to dealing with the contamination uh, issue. And as I have indicated, uh, the only way that we effectively can do that, uh, in our opinion, uh, and I just want to make this clear, is to take the building down in its entirety and put up a, a new building. Uh, we we have comments from uh, folks who are indicating that uh, they want to see more of a commercial unit, uh, commercial comp uh, component, and we're certainly willing to consider that. But we also uh, would want the board to consider the fact that the B2 zone there is an orphan zone, okay? Uh, because where there's other zones around it, uh, right next door to the B2 zone is an R zone, a high R zone, uh, with four floors, I believe, or perhaps even more, of 33 residential units. So one of the thoughts we had in terms of uh, taking the uh, building uh, uh, down and putting up residential units was that we would be consistent with the character of that uh, building next door. Uh, the, I know there have been comments from tenants uh, about uh, uh, the idea that uh, they are being compelled to leave and, and, and the like. The information I have from my client is to the contrary. The information I have from my client is that that is not the case at all, that all of the leases that exist at the property have expired. And indeed, she has taken no steps to evict anyone. She couldn't do that anyone now with the corona uh, crisis, the emergency crisis, but she's not even doing that. And what she is doing is she's been dealing with tenants, existing tenants, uh, for the purpose of talking with them uh, about coming up with alternative space in other buildings that the Pascuto family owns in Arlington. So those, those talks are ongoing. I know that. Uh, some of the issues that, uh, uh, and, and they will continue to, uh, to uh, be ongoing. Uh, she, uh, she will do the best she can to try to accommodate these folks. But again, for folks to say that she's evicting people or that they have a lease that goes on for the next 10 or 15 years, that simply is not true. She's given me information on all of the tenants, and she's assured me that the leases on all of the tenants are ended at this point. Uh, we take cognizant of the uh, of the comments made about buffering, uh, about uh, the buffer between the property and the residential property to the rear. Uh, we uh, accept the comments on that. Uh, we also uh, accept the comments on the 20-foot uh, uh, side yard, and we're looking at that as well. Uh, that's something we're focusing on. Uh, the reason we want the 22 units uh, is because we feel that the 22 residential units are uh, more marketable from the point of view of the owner. But also, uh, the governor himself has indicated that uh, 
we should have more residential units in the town. Uh, the converting the property to residential units uh, and some with some commercial component as well will be a furtherance of that objective on the part of the governor, and I think also a furtherance of uh, some objectives on the part of the town as well. That's the reason we're coming in with the idea that we would like to have uh, 22 units, uh, three of which would be uh, uh, smaller units, okay, uh, studio type units. Uh, the uh, Again, we're gonna go to school on the comments that have been made, okay, and come back uh, at the next hearing date uh, with changes with respect to our plans. But we're hoping that the board is not going to be asking us to completely redraw our plans uh, with respect to the concept that we're putting forth uh, in terms of a residential component and as well as a commercial component. Understanding that there'll be some comments and some pushback with respect to more commercial uh, 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 components as far as the building is concerned. But again, I just want to leave with the board the idea that uh, uh, we would very much like to uh, uh, pursue the plan, the, the concept of the plans we have proposed. I certainly would have no problem meeting with Ken or Rachel, or Andrew, whoever you suggest, okay, uh, in that regard for the purpose of going over the plans getting feedback as I've done with the Atwood House, okay, uh, and coming back with uh, uh, something that uh, perhaps uh, makes sense for the members of the board and makes sense for the members of the town as well. Uh, that basically is where I'm coming from at this point. But I just ask you all uh, to keep an open mind uh, with regard to what we're proposing. I don't think we're proposing anything that is alien to the neighborhood, okay? Uh, I think that, uh, and, and, and again, I'm gonna suggest to you that the B2 zone uh, is an anomaly. Uh, it, it, the B2 zone is an orphan. Uh, it shouldn't even be where it is, okay? And unfortunately, what happened years ago is town meeting uh, did what they did and they rezoned that area and they left the B2 zone hanging out there by its fingertips, okay? So we're dealing with that at this point in terms of trying to, trying to come up with a proposal that makes sense for the town and makes sense for the board. That's pretty much what I wanted to say uh, uh, without getting into details as far as plan, our plans and the like, okay? Thanks, Bob. And I, and I look forward to uh, <clears throat> working with you and having other members of the board and, and uh, staff Input. Yeah. And you know me, I want to work with the board. Okay. I don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, antagonistic to the board in terms of what they're uh, looking for as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm looking for some guidance too at this point. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. And, right? and, and Bob, I appreciate that. Thanks for, for calling in and, and thanks for the, the things that you had to say. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure that you get some sort of idea of where the board is coming from on this and that you can All right. Okay. get access to this. Um, I see Gene's hand up and then just because this is a public hearing, uh, you know, I think we will be, we, we would have been continuing it anyway based on what we saw earlier. Uh, so I'm glad to have you come in and tell us that uh, this is going to change drastically, I hope. Um, yeah. Uh, I see Gene's hand up. I'm going to let Gene speak. I'll give uh, the other members of the board one more opportunity to speak. Uh, yes, thank you. I'll be brief. One of the things I didn't say before, because I didn't know you were on, Bob, and I'm glad you mentioned the site remediation, because I was looking for, I read a lot of the materials that had been submitted to DEP about the site, and what, what I'm hoping that you can provide next time is a proposed timeline to get through phase four and get a close out of that so we can see what that's going to be and how that will mesh with your proposed timeline for the, I guess, uh, demolition and construction of a new building there. That's it. Yeah. Okay, any other board members wish to speak? I'm Please. muted, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Um, was that, I'm not sure who that was speaking. We, we, haven't, any other... we, haven't, 
Yeah, we haven't opened it up to the public yet. And if we do, we need people to raise their hand to get called on. Yeah, I, I will Please. let everyone speak. I will turn your video on so you, the spotlight will be on you. Uh, but I just ask you to bear with us until <clears throat> the board has finished with its uh, piece with Mr. Nessie. So uh, if any other board members have something to say, please go ahead. All right. Um, Andrew, I'd be, I'd, be, uh, I'd be willing to sit down with Bob and his client to uh, review uh, interim plans if he wishes. Good. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Rachel, David, Jean, anything else? All right. So hopefully, I know we have a lot of other people uh, in the room this evening. Uh, so there's a little bit of a learning curve as we move through this size. Uh, there is an option on your screens, if you're using the video option, to raise your hand. Please do so. Uh, we'll unmute you, turn on your, your camera, uh, and allow you to speak. <clears throat> I'll go through as I see hands up. Uh, if you're on the phone, I'm not completely familiar with how that works, but I know there's a way to go to, to raise your hand with uh, the keypad will allow you to speak. Um, I, I know there's a lot of controversy over this project. Uh, I think you've heard that the board is unhappy with what's been put forth uh, and that the applicant is going to change their plans. Uh, so I'd ask that you not respond to what you've already seen uh, necessarily and uh, not to go down the rabbit hole of speculation. Uh, this is uh, <clears throat> that kind of meeting where that can run rampant, uh, but uh, be respectful. Uh, you know, Remember that we're still on video, we're still in a public hearing, you're still being recorded, and uh, I hope you'll behave yourselves the way the way you would in a public meeting. So Steve Revelak, I'm gonna allow you to go first. Go ahead, Steve. Hello, Mr. Chair, Steve Revelac, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Uh, I'd like to concur with a number of the comments that you yourself made. Um, particularly, I think it would be nice to retain, um, you know, a full first floor of uh, commercial space. Um, I'm also heartened by, um, you know, something that Mr. Anise said earlier. You know, we're next door to this building is a five floor, 33 unit, uh, apartment building and to be perfectly honest when I saw the uh, when I first saw the proposal I thought cool this is something just like the something I, I wanted to see something like the apartment next to it and I'm really glad to hear that Mr. Anise is trying is, con, is his client is considering something along uh, uh, you know similar massing in that would complement it so overall I um, you know I am glad to see uh, a proposal for more housing, particularly single, you know, single bedroom and, and studios, because we, um, I mean, we have a, a, a real need for housing in general, and you know that type in particular is lacking in town. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Carl Wagner is up next. Give me a second to unmute you, Carl. Go ahead. All right. Hi, I'm Carl Wagner. Um, I live uh, in Arlington. I uh, just wanted to. Hopefully, you can hear me and see me. Um, getting a little alert. Yeah, could you just say? Yeah, I know you said your name. Could you just and that you live in Arlington? Uh, we just need your address for the record, please. For, sure. For, I'm Carl yeah. Wagner. I live at 30 Edge Hill Road in Arlington. Um, I appreciate the words that the board members have made uh, concerning the, the, uh, the proposed development. And I'd just like to add that uh, there are a lot of people here and they're here, I think, because uh, the concern is looking at the building across the street from this proposed development, people uh, are concerned that they're gonna get something like that. And I know that this board feels rightly that they, they did a lot to improve the building across the street, the one next to AHS. But people feel that that is uh, not what we were hoping when 2016 town meeting approved the uh, the, the mixed use law. And, and I really think people listening to this today should ask, should the mixed use law be changed if we're going to get units like this? Arlington needs more support for our retail, our existing businesses. Arlington needs 
retail that people uh, around those biz businesses can go out and get food from or buy something like a hardware item. Arlington doesn't need more luxury apartments and condominiums that raise the average rent for people and increase the property taxes for everybody. I guess that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Christian Klein. Hang on, Christian. Go ahead, Christian, you should be up now. Uh, uh, thank you, Christian Klein, 54 Newport Street. Uh, I just wanted to confirm that written comments were gonna be forwarded at this stage to the developer for inclusion. They will be, they've been made part of the record. Uh, they're available on our website and uh, we'll be sure to give them to uh, Attorney Anisi. Perfect, thank you very much. And thank you for those written comments as well, uh, Christian. I thought those were well thought out. Thank you. Uh, Jim Kempf. Go ahead, Mr. Kempf. Okay, I'm unmuted there. You're I, unmuted. Yes, Jim Kempf at 900 Mass Ave, so just a couple doors down from this uh, proposed project. Uh, I really like a lot of the comments from the board members and the last speaker, uh, uh, last couple of speakers. But I'd also like to couple, uh, point out a couple of points that I haven't heard much about. One, 22 units, single units, we're talking 22 cars. I see a plan with a big parking lot in there. That's a lot of traffic we're adding at a corner where we have hundreds of high school kids every morning lining up to cross that uh, street and go to school there. Um, oddly, maybe it's somewhere in the plan, it's 85 pages long, I don't know. Uh, but in the drawings of the building, I don't even see the bus stop anymore. Um, that's a highly used bus stop by kids at the Gibbs, kids at the middle school, kids coming to the high school, uh, you know, daily uh, people going to the grocery store. Um, and that's, I think, an issue. Uh, another key thing that really uh, bothers me a bit is that um, we're building all the way to the sidewalk whenever these new buildings go up. It's the same with the one across the street, a little bit down the street on the other side of Shop and Stop. Um, and there's just, you know, there's an absence of green. I uh, applaud the board members for mentioning that. But we give up quite a bit. Uh, you know, we're going to have this beautiful new high school where we've already agreed to sacrifice some of the green there. And we, we can't have any, you know, uh, along the way. I think it's part of the town character that is a problem. And uh, it, it, uh, it's something that we give up when we build to the edge, when we build with materials, which I, again, one of the board members mentioned this, that just, you know, it looks like, frankly, uh, uh, you know, I know we, we don't want to be too critical here, but it's a bit of a piece of plastic. And, you know, next door, we have this beautiful brick building that will now be hidden from view. And it matters for the long-term view of the town. What we leave is the aesthetic. And that's, I think, something that we have to consider. You know, this is a building that's going to be there for decades. And we have to, you know, I don't know how much uh, power the town has to influence, but it's now or never. And I really hope we take these things into consideration. So thank you very much. Thanks for your comments. Uh, Michael Ruderman. Go ahead, Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have three brief comments. I am heartened by the board's response to the initial plans in that there needs to be a lot of work done. And I would underline the portion of the board's comments where it was asked that the next time this matter comes before the board, we have accurate site plan and three-dimensional representations to show the surrounding buildings. They are material. The uh, setbacks and the surrounding neighborhood have a great deal to do with how the public perceives the new design of whatever is to come. Second comment, I heard it said tonight that all leases have expired within the building. That is not true. I, I come to you tonight as the treasurer of Arlington Community Media, ACMI. We have a property there that we have leased since 2012. We call it our Studio B. It is where we have taught high school age students to produce uh, you know, television content and where it is broadcast from. Our lease has not expired. We have a lease that runs through, I believe, August. We have two more renewals on that lease 
for a period of three years each, we could be there for another six years under the existing conditions of that lease. Like I said, we've been there since 2012 with a lease that takes us through 2026. We thought we were justified in investing a large sum of money. Our executive director has estimated it to be $70,000 in build out and technological additions to that property to turn it into a television studio, which we thought was a prudent investment given the length of our lease, which I will reiterate has not expired. Third point. The contamination that was referred to previously, we were not aware of any contamination on this site when we let the property in 2012. We were only informed of this, to our knowledge, for the first time a couple of months ago when we were told that the existing contamination would trigger the condemnation clause in our lease and cause us to have to leave the premises. So I find three, three things that are material to my contribution here tonight on the record as the treasurer of ACMI. One, I echo the board's dissatisfaction with the plans described so far. Two, not all leases have, have come to an end. ACMI still has a lease. Three, we have serious questions about the extent, the length, the duration, the incidence of the contamination, which we are now just finding out about. That's all I have. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate those comments. Thank you. Uh, Patrice Smith. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Patrice Smith. I live at 10 Lockland Avenue. So I'm a, I live across the street from the property that is um, being considered uh, for redevelopment. I've got a number of concerns and I will try to be brief. Um, what, I will, what I plan to do is um, send an email to this group and I will iterate all of them. But in the interest of time, um, the things that I would like to talk about are the height of the building and what kind of a shadow it will cost, the uh, uh, cast. Um, I'm interested in groundwater studies. I don't know if people are aware, but um, the uh, houses in this neighborhood are in a high water mark and our basements regularly take on water. So I'm very interested in um, what this work, uh, what, what the, uh, whether, whether there will be an impact um, for that, for uh, the folks in the neighborhood. I'm also interested in traffic impact studies, um, if anybody's been on this street from 7.30 in the morning until eight o'clock in the morning during drop off uh, for the high school, people will realize that it's, 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 uh, it's deadlock. It's very difficult to get down the street. So I wanna make sure that uh, we consider that as well. And then finally, the setback. I couldn't see, I couldn't, I, from what I looked at, I did not um, understand what the setback proposed was going to be. And as somebody else said, um, uh, I want to make sure that we've got enough setback from the street and not uh, emulating uh, what happened in the property ac across the street in the corner of, what is, I forget what, what it's just, uh, basically between the high school, next, next to Mystic Wine, you know which one I'm talking about, because uh, yeah. that, that property does not have enough of a setback. Um, so I've got a number of, you know, a, a few other concerns. The groundwater study is a big one for me. If, if my basement is going to... Uh, get wet more often, uh, we've got a big problem. We are, we've already done what we can to mitigate it. We've put in French drains, we've got a sump pump going, but you know, it, it, it can only take on so much. And then during a heavy rainstorm, our water will, our basement will take on water. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Is there any other member of the public who'd like to raise their hand and speak right now? All right. Andrew, I, I think that the, everybody can unmute themselves, so the people on the phone might not know how to raise their hand, so uh, just to reiterate that, and then also to tell people to send comments directly to me, um, and I will share them with the board, and that also I have already shared with the applicant all of the comments that have been received so far, except for anything that I received perhaps in the last two hours. I know we've, re we've received a number of comments. Those up through late this afternoon have been made public. They will continue to be made public and uh, taken into consideration, both by this board and I uh, trust by the applicant. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Jenny, how do we go about letting people who have called in speak? We haven't had to deal with this issue yet. I 
think just if you called in and you're just on the phone right now, if you wish to speak, you just need to unmute yourself. Um, you have the ability to do that on your own because you might not know how to raise your hand. So I think right. I see a phone number ending in 303 that I think wishes to speak. Please announce yourself and go ahead. Hello? Hello? Yes, go ahead, 303. You're on. Hmm? You're on. Uh, oh, you, you finally unmuted me? Hello? Your turn in the queue to speak, Mr. Warden. Please introduce yourself and, and Thank go ahead. You. Uh, we, we've been trying to uh, turn on the Zoom thing for the past 50 minutes, and we can't get it to come up. It won't It won't ask for the, the, I, the meeting ID number and stuff. And so it's, I, I don't think it's really a fair public meeting if, if, if we're not allowed to, to see it and hear it. I mean, we're being excluded because of your technology. Hello? Okay, so we're we're discussing 882, 892 Mass Ave right now, Mr. Yes, I, I know what you're discussing. I, I've been That's listening common. on the phone to it. And I, I'm, I'm glad to see that you, you picked up on some of the comments that have come in that there's not enough commercial space and that the, uh, the fear that I... <clears throat> enunciated at town meeting that they would uh, build a high-rise building with a nice street wall and one little shop in the corner is is not to the liking of the board that 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 that, that is a relief to hear that and, and i hope you will um continue in that um vein and uh, i mean mr nessie tried to uh <clears throat> sort of back and fill and say well don't don't make me change it too much and all this stuff um Minimum, it, uh, it seems to me that the ground the ground floor ought, ought to be commercial, and and uh, um, and and that seems to be something that the board members were were working towards, or some of them were any anyway. And I think that was that was what the way mixed use was sold to town meeting. So I I, I hope it continues in that in in, in that vein. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Are there any other members who'd like to, to join in via phone? Uh, you unmute yourself, just announce yourself. We'll do our best to give you the opportunity to speak. Yeah, I uh, understand that that's not the most ideal way to participate uh, right now, unfortunately, with... Uh, Andrew, there seems to be someone, uh, Michael Alexander is waving their hands. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Alexander. Well, it's Mrs. Alexander. Oh, I apologize. That's okay. Uh, my name is Judy Alexander, and I'm at Six Highland. Um, I have a very basic question, which is what is going to happen with traffic patterns when both the high school and this project come on at the same time and construction is just rampant? I think that's a concern that we'll have to deal with with the applicant, but I do appreciate that uh, that idea. It's definitely something that we're concerned about as these plans go in and the construction schedule is formulated. Thank you. Bob, do you have an answer to that? Do you want to respond? We're going to look at. Uh, that's, uh, that is something we're certainly going to look at, okay? Uh, and I thank you for that uh, for that comment. Uh, we will address that when we come back for the next hearing for sure, okay? And the other thing I want to comment on, if I could, is uh, that lease situation. Uh, I will get a copy of that and take a look at that myself, okay? But the information I received was to the contrary. I will read the lease, and uh, whatever the lease says, that's what I'm going to believe. And, right? and I just want... I just want to say right now and for future hearings, I am well aware that there is a dispute, we'll call it, over the terms of the lease and what each side yeah. is. That is not the purview of the ARB. We have no control right. or say over contracts between private parties. Right. Uh, so if there is an issue there, there are other much more appropriate ways to resolve that. Uh, right. I don't want to have that get into a back and forth between you and members of the public. I understand, but I, I simply want to know from my own information. Uh, what, no, 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 uh, and, I, and, I, and that, that comment is directed to, to anyone who might want to speak. Yeah. That, sure. Uh, 
there are, this is not an appropriate venue to, to hash yeah. out a legal dispute. Yeah. So. There is another individual with their hand raised. Yeah, I see uh, Norman McLeod, so I will go ahead, Mr. McLeod. Uh, hi, I'm Norm McLeod. Um, I'm the executive director of Arlington Community Media, and my address is 77 Tanager Street in Arlington. I just want to uh, support uh, the comments that Michael Ruderman had made before, and no, I will not get into the lease question. Uh, I'm sure uh, Mr. Anisi can follow through on that. We can talk offline, so to speak. My uh, two comments here. One is that in my world, that lease was long enough to the point where we are looking for another place to go to. We understood that the lease was going to be, uh, uh, was going to close. Um, aside from that, we have an issue where we have a, a $70,000 build out studio with current up to the day, up to date equipment, cutting edge as the phrase goes. And we just can't go into a, a, a storefront or wherever Mr. Uh, where Frank uh, or his daughter decide that they want to suggest for us. So we have an issue along those lines. We have a time, there's a time factor involved here. And that time factor really, hopefully, will go through August into September, if we have to, until we can find a place where we can go and we can transport all of our equipment and our, and our ceiling and the walls and the, and, the, and the doors, even if we have to, because they're all soundproof doors, specialized equipment. We have to find a place for all of that to go without spending about more $70,000 or more. Yeah, the other I, I don't want to interrupt you. I read a number of comments about the, okay. the use of that studio there. And yeah. uh, again, you know, we, <clears throat> this board can't enforce anything, but I would strongly uh, it would do the neighbor, the applicant some good if they could work something out with, with you folks in the short term. I'm more than willing to do that. Certainly we haven't had no contact with them and that's part of my concern. <clears throat> so if we can move forward and have contact and negotiate I'm more than happy to do that. Just one last comment. When the letter came to us concerning this, uh, this uh, question of the building being raised, there was nothing attached to it in terms of documentation to show that the, the, this building was supposed to be raised because of the EPA or environmental question. I know that three years ago, there was a test in the studio of air quality and it failed. Two years ago, it was retested and it passed. Then we received the letter saying we have to leave because the building is going to be raised. It's a curious situation. I'd like to make that uh, that one comment. I'd like to see a documentation. Thank you. Right, I'll let you work that out with uh, Mr. Nissi offline. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate the comments. All right. Is there anyone else before we turn this back to the board? Uh, who wishes? Hi. Uh, Marina Darla here. Uh, hi, I am from Six Clark, so across the street from uh, the Potential Hotel. Um, I just want to echo the concerns that my neighbors raised uh, to ensure, you know, maybe if they're repeated by enough people, they will carry more weight. Uh, main concern is traffic, water study, and the fact that there's not enough offset from the street. Uh, I personally, I don't want to look into the hotel windows. Uh, uh, just to interrupt you, we're not talking about the hotel right now. Oh, apologies. I joined late. Uh, okay, so that's it. So my comments all pertain to the hotel on the corner of Mass Ave. Got it. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? All right, so we'll continue to accept written comments uh, as soon as we receive some updated plans. Uh, those will go online for review by the board, by the public. Uh, I would encourage again, I think there's a, there's a willingness to work with the board on uh, something that may be appropriate for this site. Um, <clears throat> so, I think it's a- Do we have a date for a continuance? Uh, about to ask Mr. Nessie for one. All right. Uh, I was initially thinking June 8, okay, uh, but uh, 
listening to all the comments and particularly I want to have that meeting with Ken. I think that's going to be pretty beneficial, but I want Ken uh, to meet with my architect uh, and my uh, site guy as well. I want to, uh, all of those people to participate in that meeting. Uh, so I'm probably asking for, I'm going to be asking for a longer time. Uh, I would suggest if we could get June 29 rather than the date I was going to ask for, June 8th, that might be more relevant and more appropriate. Jenny, is that an appropriate date? June 29th. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, Mr. Um, it wasn't there in our earlier conversation. I just want to make sure that that's. Um, yeah, it's basically a uh, town meeting is June 15th with rain dates on the 22nd and I believe 29th. So I, I cannot say definitively that that will not end up being a, a date that ends up becoming town meeting. Okay. Um, we might not, we, we might need to change it again, but, um, I didn't have us having a meeting on the 29th of June. Yeah, I thought July 6th was our next date after June 8th. Oh, that's what I have, July 6th. Yeah, we, we you'd be backtracking and adding another meeting. So if, if you choose the 29th, that would be, that's a date that you would need to add as a meeting. Or well, how do you feel about July 6th? Yep, July 6th. July 6th instead of June 29th? Hello? Yes. Uh, uh, Jen, are you saying July 6th rather than June 29th? Yes. June 29th okay. is one of the rain dates for a town meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if July 6th is the date that uh, the board feels is most appropriate for them, then I, I think I have to defer to the board. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, all right. So I'll take a motion to continue public hearing special tournament docket 3625 to July 6th, 2020, 7 p.m. So motioned. Second. All in favor? Kin. Aye. David. Aye. Jean. Yes. Rachel. Aye. And I vote yes. So Bob, we'll see you on the sixth. I look okay. forward to what you have to give us. Okay. Thank you very much, all. Yep. And, and, and yep. Jenny and Kin will be in touch about uh, that offline meeting. See where we can go. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yep. So that matter is continued yep. July sixth. 7 p.m. Um, Zoom will still be on Zoom at that point. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Thanks everyone for your patience. Uh, we have a brief sign hearing, uh, docket 2818 for 880 Mass Ave. This is a continued public hearing. Special permit docket 2818 by Back Base Signs. I think we have those folks on. Um, so I think Jay Perillo is uh, our guy. Can you tell us what you've come back with? I think you've responded to our concerns from the last hearing. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, so we, we've changed the, um, the directional sign, which is sign EO5 in the sign package to a size that conforms with the bylaw as requested by the board. This is now a 1.99 square foot sign that is three feet off the ground. Okay. I don't have any, any questions or concerns about this. I think it answers the questions we asked Mr. Perillo to come back with after our last hearing. Um, I'll go down the line for members of the board. Rachel, uh, I believe this is the one you had to recuse yourself from. Correct. All right. So Jean. I have no concerns. Kin. No, I have no concerns. David. No further questions. Jenny, anything to add before I see whether there's public comment? Oh, thank you. All right. Any members of the public wish to speak to the TD Bank sign? Going once. All right. All right. So I, I would uh, <clears throat> suggest we vote to approve this package as amended with the conditions in the director's report. So moved. Second. All right. We'll go on. Voice vote here. Kin. Aye. Gene. Yes. David. Aye. Rachel. Abstain. Thank you. Uh, I vote yes. So thank you, Mr. Perillo. Thanks for coming back and, and your patience through that first hearing. Uh, thanks for your help. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too.
All right. All right. Good. Well, now we will move on to the hotel. I know we have Mary O'Connor here. Uh, I think Jim Doherty is on as well. Um, <clears throat> thank you folks for coming back. Um, I see that we don't have anything new from you and where uh, this stands. So Mary, go ahead and, and let us know where things stand and what, uh, what Mr. Doherty's intentions with the project is. Certainly. Uh, good evening to the members of the board, Mr. Chairman. I represent 1211 Mass Ave Realty Trust. Uh, you do have my letter, which um, Ms. Raid has put up of May 11th, dealing with a number of the zoning issues. And if I can just address several of them, because I think they are per pertinent. One of them is uh, the use of the property. This is a mixed use property. There was some discussion that uh, it was not a mixed use property because the hotel was a dwelling. The definition of dwelling specifically excludes hotels and motels specifically says shall not include. So this is not a dwelling. Um, it is lodging and comes within the mix, mixed use definition. With respect to the bonus FAR, I had provided it um, the calculations to you in January. Um, however, uh, Jenny mentioned to me that you don't have them on the plans. We will get that to you. With respect to the parking, the, uh, it is the sum of the two uses. As you know, there's uh, 2,800 square foot restaurant proposed for the first floor. But under Article 6, 6.110C, I would suggest to you that the 2,800 square feet of restaurant space would not be included in the overall parking calculation. It is uh, the first 3,000 non-residential space is exempt. So what you're looking at is 50 uh, parking spaces, uh, one for each hotel room, and you have the ability to reduce the parking to 25%. What um, the uh, proponent is proposing is 28 spaces, so we're looking for a reduction to 56%, well within your authority. But uh, most importantly, and this is something you have town council's memorandum to you, dated May 13th, um, concerning 5.3.17. As you know, um, it was the wrong uh, definition it was the wrong vote that was um, inserted in the bylaw that um, it is the step back is from the third floor. It's, it's a fourth floor step back. It's not a third floor step back. And I think that um, attorney Heim has suggested that to you and you are bound by the vote of uh, town meeting as to that issue. That was raised, um, uh, Mr. Benson and uh, Mr. Watson both expressed concern whether they had the authority to give that fourth floor step back, I would say to you, there is no dispute now as to that issue. Um, uh, so that segues into the additional information. When we left in January, uh, that issue as to the step back, the fourth floor was up in the air, it was um, uh, of a concern to Mr. Doherty. The project would not likely be going forward if there was not that step back. So he did not expend any additional funds to prepare the traffic study of the like until that issue was resolved. I would suggest to you that issue was resolved and has been resolved by attorney Hine. Um, and based on that, um, and assuming that the board accepts the representation of town council, um, uh, Mr. Doherty is pre prepared to complete what you, what Ms. Raitt has uh, pointed out in her memorandum of May 14th that is necessary for you to um, uh, have, a, have all the information you need with respect to this project. So that, so if you have any questions, but we don't have items one or two for you for this tonight's hearing. Thank you, Mary. I um, <clears throat> appreciate that update and uh, hope that we can move forward on a, on a faster timeline at this point. Um, Andrew, if I may point out one thing, there is a concern, we have called two traffic um, consultants you know, with school out of session, this presents a unique issue with respect to the traffic study. Um, there may be other ways to collect that data by getting uh, numbers of students in school and extrapolating things. We were not able to get an answer as to how quickly that could be done in light of the COVID situation. Okay. So we have that to deal with, but we, you will have a complete traffic study that will also address pedestrian and bicycle safety. Good, I think that's important. David, go ahead.
Oh, sorry about that. Couldn't find the unmute. A um, couple of things. Uh, first, I, I think uh, there, there are two different issues related to the upper story setback. Uh, the first uh, is the one um, that uh, Attorney O'Connor referred to uh, regarding um, regarding uh, whether the step back needs to start at, at the third or, or fourth floor. And we do have town council's uh, uh, advice regarding that. The other issue, which is the one that I, I think Gene and I were both concerned about is whether um, the uh, depth of the step back uh, can be altered uh, from the seven and a half feet um, uh, called for in, in the zoning bylaw uh, because the, um, the applicant has uh, proposed Kind of splitting um, the setback um, into into multiple stepbacks on different floors in order to to meet the overall requirement, and it wasn't clear to us whether we we actually can allow that. Um, so that was the other question uh, regarding the stepback. Um, I'm glad to hear that the applicant is prepared to move forward with. A traffic study, not just of the hotel, but of of the uh, wider area that it is uh, situated in. Particularly since there was um, just another uh, bicyclist fatality at the Mass Ave Appleton intersection uh, near this site. That was all I had for the moment. Thanks, David. Go ahead, Gene. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I um, thank you for your letter, um, Attorney. Um, O'Connor. I, I just wanted to respond to a few things in your letter, which I think might help inform what's going on. Um, first, as far as the step backs on the fourth floor rather than the third floor, yes, we did receive the memo from town council. And I believe that, you know, I'm bound by his legal opinion that even though the regular, the current bylaw as published says third floor, the correct way to look at it is town meeting voted fourth floor. So I agree that his um, um, opinion to us resolved the issue of which of the two floors the step backs should be on. I do have some other concerns about your letter and I'll just say them because I, for me at least, I would like to see them responded to when you give us all the other materials that you haven't provided yet. Um, the first one has to do with the um, bonus FAR that um, is being asked for. In addition to asking for the actual calculations, um, I would like to know what the square footage of is proposed to be for the public access space, because it wasn't clear whether that was part of um, what you were going to be giving us, but I did want to see. That, that's correct. We'll that, is, that, that we'll that see as part of it. And if you could give us a draft of what the public easement would be, I'd mm -hmm. like to be able to take a look at that also. Um, so that's one thing. Um, second is on um, the... Um, setback, not the step backs, but the setbacks. Um, your memo or your letter says the bylaw does not require a front yard or a side yard setback. Yet, as I read the bylaws, because you're on a corner um, with Clark, you have to meet the requirements for what the front yard setback would be on Clark, which is 20 feet. And while we can waive that under our authority, I would like to hear from you about why you think the hotel is not subject, not now, but in your letter back to us again, why you think the hotel is not subject to the 20 feet setback because on Clark, you have that setback, it's an R2 zone. And secondly, 
Andrew, can I interrupt Jean for one quick second on that one point there? I did do some research on that. Is, that, is that okay, Jean? Can, can I finish and then interrupt? If, sure. Yeah, and if, if we do have that requirement and you want us to waive it, tell us um, why what this is, is some condition that's unique. Uh, not simply that this is a hotel, but why it's unique enough that we should raise it. So, sorry, Ken, go right ahead. Interrupt. That's all right. Um, on Clark Street, that's considered a front yard setback. And in um, and the building behind it is also a corner lot. There's also a front yard setback. And according to the zoning, for front yard setbacks, there's an exception in the, in, the, uh, in the zoning says that it could be an average of what existing set, set uh, buildings are at. So I actually went out and, and um, guesstimated what the setback was for the building behind it was from the front, front yard. I'm saying it's probably six or seven feet. So where they're taking the average, they, they're taking that exception in the zoning so that they're, they're meeting that um, requirements. Uh, well, is that I, correct, Mary? That's correct. And there's actually a much more complicated legal argument that I can get into in a letter when I send it to you as to why I don't think it's frontage, but uh, I don't disagree necessarily. Yeah, I don't think it's frontage either. I don't think frontage makes the difference here, but I, I'd like to see your explanation. And then if we do need to provide an exemption from that, why um, we should do it. Um, um, the next question I had related to um, the, the parking. What, what I believe was said the last time, and I, I would like to see this in writing, that the valet parking will only be for the people who will be staying overnight at the hotel and will not be for the restaurant guests. So I would like to see that in writing and I would like to see it some way that that's going to be communicated to the restaurant guests. Mm -hmm. And um, those, yeah, those are my, um, my comments on your letter. And then with everyone else, I would like to see all the materials that have not been provided. Sir. Thank you. Thanks, Jean. Ken, do you have anything else? Yeah, Mary, can you uh, quickly go over with me um, bu just bullet points, what you will be providing uh, going forward uh, now that you got this, uh, you know, our review today. Sure. I'm just concerned that a lot of things don't get slipped between the cracks. I think Ken, they are all in Jenny's memo dated May 14th. Plus okay. the things that, um, uh, and she has it up on the screen, plus whatever the board asks for tonight with respect to different explanations. So you have the traffic study, a complete traffic study, and then you have two A through H. Okay, uh, hold on a minute. I have all the pictures blocking that, okay. Uh, and, and I will tell you, I went and cross-referenced this with the January memorandum and Jenny has picked everything up. Yeah, I think, thanks Mary. <clears throat> I think the big thing for me will be elevations. Yeah, uh, this, yes, Andy, sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. proper, proper, accurate elevations that will really give a, a good sense of what's out there. Uh, I think there are some other illustrative photos that have been passed around and used as gospel, which aren't necessarily the case. Uh, obviously, what we look for is, is an elevation to judge how exactly the property sits on the site. So uh, that's that's a big thing. That's that's really the main thing I'm looking for. And uh, the traffic study, of course. So I'll turn it over to Rachel for any comments. Sure, I, I would actually ask that you go go back to again the, the January meeting notes. There um, were actually quite a few additional comments that were made about the design of the building it, itself, um, irrespective of the of the setbacks um, that don't appear on this list from from Jenny. Um, and I think that the the quality, you know, to Andrew's point, the, the quality of the of the drawings, the elevations that we see being able to address um, in much more realistic um, depictions what it is we're going to see, um, much more akin, quite frankly, to some of the, the, the things that were in the package of the, 
mixed use facility we didn't even get to tonight. Um, you know, I would just like to see the drawings to the next level of, of quality so that we can really review them in, in much greater detail because there's there's a lot of nuance here. And um, I, I think that the quality of the of the of the drawings addressing all of the 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 comments that were made at the last meeting need, need to be um, really attended to. Okay. Thank you. That was the plan. Thank you. Any other and, comments? And one more thing, Andrew. Yep, go ahead. Uh, in this, in this Zoom. Sorry, what do you say? Go ahead. No. In this Zoom meeting, um, it's all new to us. How do we actually see materials? Before, we used to ask the proponent to actually bring in samples of the materials. Are we okay with just like uh, seeing photographs of, of different materials so we have an understanding of yeah, you know, when they say stone, what kind of stone? What color is it? The texture, that kind of stuff. It makes it very hard to um, to understand that through the Zoom meeting. I think. So, Ken, I know that we've had to present materials, um, yeah, and I'll just use my own experience here. We've had to present materials, you know, as architects um, before in the past. And I think, Mary, what you ask your architect to do is to do a flat lay of the materials and photograph them. Um, along with providing detailed specifications that will that will describe, you know, to Ken's point, what is the what is the finish? Is it is it smooth? Is it glossy? Is it is it textured? Um, you know, together with with those photographs is going to be very important. And not and again, before it was this is the kind of material we're going to use. We, we'd really like to see the specific the color. This is the finish. This is this is what we're going to be proposing. Yeah. Andrew, I had, I had one other item I to mention before. The shadow studies. I'm, I'm not clear whether the new shadow studies took into account the change in elevation between the building, the proposed building, and the residences behind it. And I'd like some clarification on that. And also, I was unclear whether the new shadow studies resulted in any shadows being cast on um, the, one of the two um, solar arrays. So when you submit the materials, can you just get, give us some clarifications yes. on those in writing? Certainly. I think that would be helpful. Could I, could I actually pose a question to the other members of the of the board? Um, mm -hmm. Given the the tra how important the traffic study is, not only to to this board but also to the to the neighbors, I'm wondering if we should ask for that to be also submitted to the um, traffic advisory committee and have them weigh in on this as well. Given the the challenges of the many intersections surrounding this particular property. Yeah, I, Jenny, can we arrange that? Do we have to do that formally or can that, are they meeting? Can that be done? So they're, they're actually meeting tomorrow night to talk about that intersection as a result okay. of um, the, the crash that happened um, with a driver unfortunately killing a, a bicyclist on the roadway and revisiting a CTPS report um, that had been done in 2012. I think that this particular traffic study that you're talking about would be very useful for them to review and provide input on. Um, I don't know their exact meeting schedule at this time, but we can coordinate that, you know, offline. Yeah, I think I'd definitely I'd, like to see that happen. I'd, I'd be interested in knowing how they're going to do this study without real traffic going on these days, unless there was a traffic count done, you know, within the past year, let's say, in that area. Um, that they can use for that. I'm also a little concerned about their traffic study that the one they submitted so far from B BCS group because it lists, for example, traffic going to and from the DAV building, which hasn't been occupied in years. So when they compare, you know, what is it going to be now compared to before, they're using compared before numbers that are completely wrong. So I have some concerns about that. And I also have some concerns about how they're going to give us a traffic study without traffic. Yeah, I, I definitely share that concern as well, uh, particularly uh, because school is not in session and uh, 
I, I've seen for myself in the past uh, how many students are going back and forth uh, through um, through that area. Um, I also, while I, I do think it would be very helpful for them to look at that 2012 CTPS report, um, I would suspect that both motor vehicle volumes and bicycle volumes in particular have increased significantly since then. Um, and uh, and uh, given the current situation, it's, it's just going to be very difficult to know where we're at right now with respect to uh, volumes on any of the modes. They may be able to extrapolate, you know, um, based on number of students, you know, if we get counts from the school department, there may be other ways to do it. So that's what we're trying to find out. The only point I was making with that study is that TAC will be discussing that study and the accident that occurred. Um, that, that would be the only reference point. In terms of how that relates to this project, I think it's somewhat related, but I think it's absolutely, in, it needs to be updated. And the directive that's been provided to this applicant has been pretty clear that it needs to be further studied. It also needs to relate to the neighborhood impacts. And uh, we did a request back in essentially last July um, for this issue to be addressed when school started, which was last September. So at this point, you know, due to the current conditions, they won't be able to study that. And, and either the board, you know, will have to accept what they provide to us, or we would need to further postpone that element of the traffic analysis. Um, but that was the only reason I referenced the study. Thanks, Jenny. Any other comments from members of the board before I open this up to public comment? Um, Mary, do you have anything else that you want to share? Or does Jim want to speak before I open it up? Not, not at this point, Jim. Jim, did you want to share anything? No. No, okay. All right, so I'll open it up to members of the public. Again, state your name and address. Use the raise hand function. We'll work through that first, uh, <clears throat> then turn to the folks on the phone. Uh, again, I appreciate everyone's patience through this time. Uh, it's challenging to conduct a meeting through a laptop camera. Uh, so go ahead and raise your hands. We'll open it up. Um, you know, I think there's, there's not much new to discuss here. I think the, the chances that we bring this back uh, next month or so are likely since we've asked the, the applicant for so much more. But uh, go ahead, Don, you're up. Don Seltzer. I unmuted you, where'd you go? Okay, how about my video? Thank you. I'm not quite sure where to begin. Uh, let's start with the claim that this is not a residential use. I don't understand the logic that was given. I have provided the board um, with the section of the bylaws that clearly laid this out. It's 5.5.3 use regulations for business districts. There are about 13 different residential uses listed there, ranging from single family, two family, three family, et cetera. And number 10 on the list is hotel motel. That's a residential use allowed in the B4 through special permits. Um, so it seems pretty clear. This is a residential use and the, um, and the impact of course is that the bonuses under the floor area ratio are not available for a residential use under 20,000 square feet. The next claim that was made is that um, there's no frontage along Clark Street. Um, you might notice I'm talking to you from Clark Street with the property 1211 in the background here. Uh, it certainly looks like it's has frontage along Clark Street. Um, I don't understand the argument again that was given. Uh, if you look 
in the definitions of the bylaw as to lot lines, you'll find out that corner properties do indeed have two front lot lines, one back lot line and one side lot line. Uh, this is a corner property. It has frontage on Clark Street and all the things that relate to yard setback and upper story step back apply to this building. This is something that is of real interest to the people who live over on Clark Street on 26, 28 and 30 Clark Street um, in terms of shadows. Eliminating this 20 foot setback that is required, the impact on the, the people living in, the, in those um, at that address is that they're going to have their winter sunlight in the afternoon cut by 50%. They would have 50% more afternoon sunlight if this setback was observed. So it probably matters to them. And it's not just a few weeks or so. This is an effect that's gonna last all winter for them from about late October to March 1st. So I think it probably matters to them. And the other aspect is that because it is on a corner, it faces a street that the fourth floor has to be stepped back also, not just the Mass Avenue side, but the Clark Street side has to be stepped back. And I'm really disappointed that that type, the topographical survey hasn't come in yet because that's gonna reveal all kinds of problems um, in terms of what the real height of the hotel is. You're gonna find out it's not 44 feet, um, six inches or whatever was given because that was measured simply at the highest corner of the land and it slopes off both down Mass Ave and it slopes off to the back of course. And if you get the true elevations, I think you're gonna find that this hotel exceeds the 50 foot height limit um, that the uh, zoning laws allow. And you're also gonna find out there are problems on the lower level where the parking is. We have yet to find out exactly how high the garage um, openings are. I think you're gonna find that they're rather small. They're only gonna be eight or nine feet. It's gonna be a real problem for all those delivery trucks that are gonna be coming down into there delivering their stuff and not gonna be able to turn around because they're not gonna be able to back out into the garage and there's not enough turning radius in the parking lot for them to operate. Uh, I can go on with other issues, but I think that's enough for now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, other public comment. Anyone on the phone wish to chime in? Go ahead, Mr. Wagner. And Andrew and Leroy has her hand up too. Uh, I see that now. Yep. Carl Wagner, go ahead. All right, thank you. Hi, Carl Wagner, uh, 30 Edge Hill. Oops. Let me start the video again. Andrew, can you start my video again? Uh, yep. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Should be on. You should All be. Right. There you go. The weird process. Anyway, no, we see you can see me and hear me. Uh, Carl Wagner, I live at 30 Edge Hill Road in Arlington. Um, I just wanted to add something for the benefit of people who are here as participants or are watching the recordings. Um, although I don't mean to impugn the attorney for the developer at all, I think it's strange that Arlington continues to allow people that have powerful positions in town government or related to town government to represent people in front of town boards like yours. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong in this specific circumstance, but it really does bother me that we have somebody on the board of assessors who is petitioning you and potentially could lean you in some other uh, case uh, one way or the other. And so I would hope that people who are watching this will actively try and change Arlington's rules on how uh, meetings can happen with town officials representing uh, private parties in front of town boards. Thank you very much. Andrew, may I respond to that? Go ahead, Mary. I am a special town employee, ex exempted and able to represent uh, clients in front of other boards as a matter of Massachusetts law. I see Lisa Hines. Lisa, go ahead.
Hi. Um, I wanted to just speak in favor of the project. I know there's more material required for the applicant to submit, but um, I'm sorry, 14 Sunset Road. Um, so as a nearby uh, property owner, I appreciate the investment in the lot and I would love to see the, the development occur. So I know that I know that it comes with a mixed bag and some trade-offs um, associated and, and more needs to be understood about the traffic implications. And I share the concern um, regarding the Appleton intersection, but I, I, I just wanted to voice support of investment in this property. That's all. Thank you. Uh, and I see you on here twice. So if I've unmuted the wrong one, uh, you know what, I'm gonna unmute both. Ann LaRoyer, go ahead. She's still muted. Oh, there she goes. Yeah, there's two, There's she's in twice, so. Yeah, and, I know, my husband was on the other computer downstairs. Ah, okay. And I guess they both came up as my name, so. Um, okay, thank you, thank you for um, this whole um, hearing and everything. I, I had some, uh, questions about um, starting with Miss um, O'Connor's uh, letter. Um, she talks about the bonus FAR. Um, she talks about a public access space for public art and presentation. But um, so my question, I guess, is is that that would only really be usable in good summer months, and is that enough of a reason to ask for a 10% increased FAR? Uh, bonus. I don't quite know all the terminology, but it just seems like that's a that's a limited um, advantage to the property. And in fact, many neighbors are not even in favor of that type of um, music or public activity that would be happening there. And with also questions about the hours of the usage of that space. So that that's one issue um, about the upper story setback or step back. Um, in her letter, she says, this project um, contains a boutique hotel on substantially unimproved lots. Well, in fact, Mr. Doherty owns the B4 lot that is egregiously unimproved, has full of abandoned vehicles. It's really a, a junkyard. He has not been a good uh, steward of that space. And um, so there's a real question about how he would steward this property in the future. Um, and there's an, also an argument about that in order for this project to be successful, there must be quote, um, adequate room revenue. Um, and that has to do with the setbacks and the, the FAR and so forth. Um, but is it really the ARB's responsibility to worry about the financial success of of a project like this? That's a question. Um, and um, let's see, well, another thing, we've already talked about the traffic. Uh, that's a, a major, major concern for the neighborhood. So I know that there'll be much more about that to come. So I won't dwell on that too much, but um, it really has to be the full expanse of the Mass Ave from all the way from Forest Street all the way through Lowell Street. I mean, that whole area is just a mess. And, um, you know, the bike rider accident that happened recently is only one of a number of accidents that have happened in that area. So um, I'm glad that that's gonna be looked at more thoroughly. Um, the former Nicola's Pizza across the street on, on the corner of Mass Ave and Clark is currently being uh, renovated. I think it'll be interesting to see what um, once that's open and there's more traffic that's brought into the neighborhood from that business, um, that will also impact how this whole um, area is gonna be used. Um, and, and finally, this is um, for a future, I suppose, but I, we, the neighbors are just very concerned about what recourse we might have in the future. If this project in some form goes forward, and it's not successful or it becomes abandoned or it's not maintained properly 
what recourse do their neighbors going to have if this, you know, does not really work out the way, you know, it could and it should if it was a good project and not as large and overwhelming as it, it appears to be. Um, so th those are some of the neighborhood concerns that I just wanted to share. And we have a group of more than 30 immediate neighbors who are um, on a local email list and that and there are more that keep coming into the group and we're all very, very concerned about how this is gonna go forward. So thank you for um, looking into this further. Thanks, Anne. Uh, Mr. Loretti, go ahead. You are unmuted. Hello, Mr. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you. I, I'm speaking on a telephone, so let me know if, if um, there's any problem with, with the audio. But no, you're you. loud and clear. Uh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to go through a few uh, legal aspects that I think pertain to this case, and in particular, some of the requirements of the zoning bylaw that I believe the ARB needs to be cognizant of. And the first one is, I believe that the legal notice for this hearing um, was defective at the start, and that's because Section 11 of 48 of the, of the State Zoning Act requires that the nature of the relief being sought be put into the uh, legal notice for the special permit hearing. And I don't see that there. Um, so I, I just mentioned that, um, you know, to, so, so you're aware of it, but I'd like to get into some of the requirements of the zoning bylaw that give you guidance on how to consider a project like this. And under section 1.4 applicability, um, there's a couple sentences that I think are particularly relevant. One that says, no building structure or land shall be used for any purpose or in any manner other than as expressly permitted within the district in which it is located. Well, clearly the bylaw does not permit a hotel in the B2 district, so that criterion is not met. And then that same section goes on to say, whenever the regulations made under the authority hereof differ from those prescribed by any statute law or sex or i'm sorry other section of the zoning bylaw or other regulations that provision which imposes the greatest restriction or the highest standard shall govern so if there's a discrepancy or, or an inconsistency within the bylaw itself it's the obligation of your board to read the most restrictive or take the most restrictive reading of it the other thing I want to point out to you is decision criteria for all special permits. And this is under section 3.3.3A. And what it says is one of the things that your board has to find, uh, it, it says the determination shall include findings that all of the following criteria for granting a special permit are met. And the very first one is that the use requested is listed as a special permit use in the use regulations for the applicable district or so designated elsewhere in the bylaw. Well, again, clearly a hotel does not fit that uh, in the B2 zoning district. Now, the um, applicant has talked about the um, exceptions to the maximum floor area ratio regulations under section 5.3.6. And as Mr. Salser clearly pointed out, the principal use here is residential. It has nothing to do with whether there are dwelling units or not. The applicable uh, uh, sentence in the uh, in this section of the bylaw is uh, um, the lot or part of the lot is not less than 20,000 square feet when the principal use is residential. It doesn't say anything about dwelling units. Uh, and clearly, um, this isn't residential. I mean, the principal use is residential. The lot is less than 20,000 square feet. So this bonus provision doesn't apply. But even if it did apply, it doesn't apply to the B2 zoning district because if you look under subsection C, it lists the various districts where the, um, where the bonus provisions might apply. And it's very selective. B2 was not listed there at all. And you can't simply consider a B2 zoning district to be a B4 zoning district. It's not. Indeed, if the applicant or the town wanted to do that, they should have put in a warrant article to town meeting to change the zoning of the B2 lot to B4. 
the other um, thing I would point out, and this becomes very clear when you look at uh, what they're doing, we're trying to do with this bonus provision, is that this project not only does it not have any usable open space, it completely fails to meet the requirements for landscaped open space. And this section of the bonus provisions that they're trying to take advantage of, you know, further state that the land that's going to be deeded doesn't, can't count towards meeting the open space requirements. And, um, and also that the gross floor area calculation from the amount of, from the amount of um, lot area is reduced. So we haven't seen any of those calculations, but that was something that, that was clear from the outset. And then under section 5.3.5, it, it again indicates that you can't use the floor area, reg, floor area ratio regulations for one district and another. You have, when you have two different districts making up the lot, you have to apply them separately. You can't apply the more lenient floor area ratio requirements across the whole parcel. And finally, I'd like to talk about um, section 5.3.16. This is the yards or setbacks um, for lots and the ARB's ability to adjust that. Um, one thing I would point out is not only was that relief not sought in the legal notice for this hearing, it was not sought in the application either. So I'm not really sure what business the board has even considering it when the applicant hasn't put it in the application. Um, and finally, I'd like to make a, a comment about the public docket for this hearing, because it seems to me that public comments, and your board has received numerous ones in writing, are not being made part of the docket. When I go to the website for the ARB, the public docket's listed. It does not include any of the public comments. They are a vital and necessary part of the, docu of the docket, and I, I'd suggest that it's actually a legal requirement that to be, they put it, be put into the docket because should this special permit be appealed, they need to be part of that file. Um, and I notice even for this very, uh, the hearings for tonight's meeting, there were materials submitted in time and they were listed under correspondence received. Those, those materials should be part of the docket. And so I would ask that the board, one, update the docket for this um, um, special permit procedure on its website and include everything not just submissions from the applicant or other people in the town, they need to include, or the docket needs to include the full listing of materials and submissions from the public as well. Um, finally, just let me quickly address Mr. Wagner's comment. Um, indeed, the attorney for this proceeding, I understand, is a special town employee, and that's due to a decision made by the select board. They are the ones that determine whether town employees can be deemed special municipal employees or not. So if people have concerns about that, they need to direct them to the select board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have right now. Thank you, Mr. Loretti. Uh, Michael Sandler. Uh, hi there. Uh, Go ahead. You should be able to start your video. Yeah, I just clicked it. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm Michael Sandler. I'm at 18 Pierce Street and um, just a couple of comments. Um, the uh, with the um, high school rebuild, the uh, and the uh, DPW um, renovation um, happening, uh, the former Lalicata or the soon to be former Lalicata spot is going to be uh, an undersized space for what the town needs, uh, which is right down the street. Um, in addition, there's a liquor store going into the former Nicola's Pizza. Um, clearly we're a neighborhood that's, um, experiencing some transition. Um, it's going to be vital that we have a real traffic study, not a virtual one. This, uh, this virtual meeting that we're having is not, um, it's not quite up to, uh, what we need as a town in terms of a public forum. Similarly, uh, to move forward without a real actual, um, traffic study with school in progress uh, without, without traffic on the streets, um, I think is um, that, that's, a, that's a real warning. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Wagner for his, uh, for his comments. Um, the, the optics of this, um, 
have for the last year or so uh, been bothersome to me. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carol McDonald, I know you've been waiting a while. Go ahead, should be unmuted. How about now? I can hear you now. And see. You. Okay. All right. I don't want you to see me. Um, I'm Carol McDonald. I live at 1192 Mass Ave. Um, unfortunately, we were there when that accident happened um, last week. That is only one of many I have seen in my lifetime living in this house. Um, the traffic study, I agree with Ian LaRoya. You have to do one. You should even ask the patrol ladies that do that intersection when school is on. They will tell you how bad the traffic is in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, I don't know if you have asked them about it. Have you, as the committee, approached them on it about their opinion? We have not directly, but I think that's one of the reasons why we um, brought up the, the option of, of speaking with the traffic advisory committee. The, the patrol ladies themselves you should be speaking to. They've had close calls at that intersection that we have witnessed. So I think that is major too when you do that um, study. And you gotta remember, you just can't do a student count. You have the St. James School that has a daycare up there. You have the children's place that always has traffic. And then you have to take into consideration what goes on at the church too, funerals and whatever when they have processions. So the glare in the morning, the accident that occurred last week was basically due to glare. And you need to do the study at that time of day to, to understand how that glare affects Mass Ave at that particular area, <laughs> Lowe's, Appleton Street, and Mass Ave. So um, I don't think anything can go forward without that traffic study before you make a decision on anything. Another question I have is, I mean, I, I, and I'm sure there's many people that have lived in this neighborhood as long as I have, but I remember that gas station across the street. And if the tanks were removed, I'm talking about the contamination study, wouldn't there have been a permit those tanks were removed? Because I don't remember them ever being removed from that site. So I don't rely on, I don't know how, Comprehensive Mr. Doherty's study was on the contamination, but are we allowed to look at that study that he did? It's it's part of the record. If it, anything that's part of this docket is available on the website, the town website. All right. Yeah. Then, then I, I'm thinking about all these hotels that are being built and some of them in Cambridge, 160 rooms, 200 rooms, it's gonna have an effect on this small hotel here. I mean, has he taken that into consideration what's going on closer to Harvard Square versus a small hotel in Arlington? And what would happen if it's not filled? Is he gonna rent it out as not a hotel, as a room board? I mean, what happens when his vacancies, there's too many vacancies for him to bring in income? Are you gonna allow him to, you know, rent out the room for section, I'm not putting down section eight, I'm just saying, is there gonna be stipulations of how he can run that hotel? That's another thing I would like to know, if it goes through. It'll be run as a hotel and if the use, if it were to be approved, if the use were to change, Mr. Dory would have to come back in front of us, reopen the special permit and tell us why and how. Okay. I'm just saying, because what goes on in the, the hotels that are being built down the street from us, I see more people tending to want to go, you know, rent rooms there, hotel rooms there than coming to Arlington. Yeah. I just don't feel it's a feasible, it's practical to have a hotel in Arlington. It's not the right space. I'm, I've been in this neighborhood, and I agree with Ann that a lot of us oppose it, and another question I have, this is gonna take a while to get resolved. Why can't, why can't you rent out the VFW in the meantime to get some type of income coming in? What, what is preventing you from doing a short time lease to at least get some type of 
and coming to the um, town. Mary, I'm just, the bushes are growing. <laughs> Who knows what it looks like inside? That building is owned by the town. Uh, we don't have anything to do with leasing it out. So it's, just gonna stay, to so it's just going to stay empty until you get the shoes off. Well, that that's the town's choice. All right, then well, I'll call the town manager then and see what I can do. It just seems it's just it's it's sitting there, and you could at least get some type of income coming in on it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Appreciate the comments. Uh, Andrea Dwyer. Go ahead, Andrea. Hi. Uh, my name is Andrea Dwyer. I am at 26 Pier Street, which is the uh, condominiums directly behind um, the property on the corner of Clark and Pier Street. And um, I am someone who is definitely eager in general to see the property cleaned up. I think we've discussed at length the um, status of the property and what an eyesore it is. Um, you know, and I have the, the same concerns a lot of my neighbors have expressed around things like traffic and parking and, you know, potentially privacy of having this many visitors to the neighborhood. Um, the one thing I want to um, put some particular attention on in terms of my own concerns are um, the elevations that I know have been asked for and some um, perhaps for revised images and revised renderings. What I'd like to request be, be emphasized is being able to picture the property from, from the back, from you know standing on my property and, and looking towards that property. There is not a lot dividing our property. There's, you know, visually there's one large tree um, and a low fence. And um, as a few people have expressed, there is a significantly different um, elevation level between Pierce Street and, and Mass Ave. So the property that, that exists there, while um, you know, much lower than the property that is being discussed, still is, looks you know, quite high up from standing from my property. Um, and so you know, my major concern is the effect of having a building that is absolutely looming over you know, my property and, and in the neighborhood in general. Um, and I, you know, I've seen the images that were originally created where you look, you know, say coming down Mass Ave towards, towards the center at what the property might look like. I know there are some, you know, questions about that in general, um, you know, but one aspect of it is that you're kind of looking downhill at it. And I think it makes it look, or even just level at it, but it makes it look smaller than, you know, it would appear from, from within the uh, neighborhood itself and from within my property. Um, you know, by extension, I know there've been the, the sort of sunlight studies. There's definitely a major concern that I and my neighbors in the building have regarding, um, you know, just, just feeling like this, this massive building really is, is over our property and um, taking away, you know, all of the light and, and, and privacy that we have. Um, yep, so thank you for your attention and um, I appreciate the, the consideration. Thanks for your comments, appreciate it. Anyone else wish to speak about this matter? Anyone on the phone wish to chime in? Mr. Wagner. Um, I just, uh, this is Carl Wagner. I just wanted to make a point of, of, of order, a of, of question. Wasn't there a woman in the first section who did want to speak? I don't know if she had her comments. Yeah. Before. Hi, probably me. You're probably thinking about me, Marina Darlow. Go ahead, Marina. Well, I just uh, want to reiterate the concerns of my neighbors. I'm across the street from the, the prospective hotel. I'm at Six Clark. Um, traffic may be a real issue. We're right on the corner of Mass Ave, um, very close by. So I'm concerned about a ton of cars with a very limited visibility. Um, spoke about it before. So my main point in speaking up is just to, I guess, um, reiterate the number of people uh, in the neighborhood and, you know, maybe give us a, a little louder voice. I don't know what will be the parking situation because right now uh, Clark is a private street. Um, I would like to know what it would mean in terms of um, 
the hotel parking and how tempting it would be to the restaurant guests to just park on our street because there are no visible um, limitations. And frankly, nobody would ever come and give them a ticket. I don't think that ever happened for other people. But right now it's, you know, it's manageable. When we have 30 cars along the street, it might be less manageable. Um, and the last concern is just to build on what Andrea said, um, the elevation and the setback of the third slash fourth floor. Um, I would like to see a better quality um, drawing um, that would be more reflective of how the building would really look. That's it. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for the reminder uh, to bring you in. Is there anyone else who uh, has not spoken would like to speak about the hotel issue? All right, so I, I, I'm gonna bring it back to the board at this point then. Um, yeah. Can somebody start my video? Someone turned it off. Hang on, go ahead, Chris. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I just have a, a question. I forgot to ask you um, earlier, can you confirm that you received a copy of the um, transcript of the town meeting section or the excerpt of the trans the excerpt excerpt from town meeting uh, at the time that the mixed use zoning bylaw that um, was passed that I sent you it, it pertained to the question of allowing prohibited uses as part of mixed use and I had um, copied the relevant sections and sent it to the board. We've received know, with respect to the discussion we've had with the town council that have included that, so that we we do have that. You have, and it is made part of the um, of the docket. I will defer to Jenny as to whether that's part of the docket, but it's been received and marked. Okay, because I specifically requested that it be part of the docket, so I expect it to be made part of the docket. Thank you. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak about this matter? All right, now I'm going to bring it back to the board. If anyone else has comments about this, they can submit them in writing. Um, I think there's a lot of questions that still need to be answered. <clears throat> a lot that's still unknown about this. Um, and speaking as a member of the board, uh, I'm a little bit frustrated that it's gone on for this long. And <clears throat> many of these questions are still unanswered. Uh, I understand some of the challenges that are out there with a project of this size and uh, with as many stakeholders as there are. But I think right now we need to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, there are a number of things that we've asked for, uh, a number of things that, uh, Mary, you've agreed to provide, Attorney O'Connor, you've agreed to provide to us. Um, I would like to see those and have this matter back on the docket back on the, the agenda um, within 45 days. And I would suggest that if Mr. Doherty is not prepared to do that, to provide those things, uh, that he let us know so that we can make alternate arrangements and uh, consider what, what other options might be out there. I think clearly, Andrew, with respect to 2A through H, that's achievable. I cannot say for certain as to the traffic study until we talk to the traffic engineers to see what they're doing. They they may have a system that they're using in these circumstances. So, you know, I, I think that's achievable for two. I think we have, uh, it's a little bit more than <clears throat> 45 days or maybe it's maybe it's not, but I think what I'd like to see is uh, this back on the, the agenda for July 6th. Uh, we'll just put these two projects together on the same meeting and uh, power through it. Um, I think I think there's a lot of value to this project, uh, to the town and uh, to the site in general, but I think there are a lot of concerns that, that need to be answered uh, by, <clears throat> the board needs to have answered, that the neighbors need to have answered, uh, and we need to see some some action from, from Mr. Doherty. Uh, so, I think what I would do is ask for a motion that this be, unless the other members of the board have anything to say, having heard what we've heard, 
Uh, I think I'd take a motion to continue this hearing to July 6th at 7 p.m. Um, Can I just say something? Go ahead. I, I think it's probably worth saying when a lot of people are still listening in that we've gotten two legal opinions from town council that relate to this. One has to do with the step backs and says, which basically says that the step backs should be on the fourth floor and that the wording on the bylaw third floor did not reflect the town meeting vote, which was fourth floor. The other comment or opinion we've gotten from the town council and I'd, I'd like the other board members to correct me if I've gotten this wrong, is that um, this, this project, even though it's in both B2 and B4, and part of it's a hotel and part of it's a restaurant, meets the zoning requirements because it's mixed use and mixed use is allowed in both of those districts. So I feel bound by the, um, legal opinion of town council on both of those issues. That's correct, Jean. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, before you vote on the July 6th, if, I, um, if we find out in the next week that the traffic study is not achievable by July 6th, how do you want me to handle that? Let Jenny know and uh, we'll discuss that. We have some other meetings that come up before that July 6th hearing. So if it needs to be continued or if uh, we need to have you back in on a, uh, <clears throat> to some degree, we can do that. Okay. Andrew, if I could just say one thing, I, I, right. I really don't want this to come back to us without the traffic study <laughs> and without a traffic study that we can all feel confident um, we can rely on and make some decisions based on. So. If, if it is not achievable, then um, I think we need to understand what a new timeline is and defer that until this time. I, I, I very much would like to, to continue this discussion and, and see this project um, move forward in front of us for, for further deliberation. But I, from hearing from all the neighbors and from what we have all said, I think the most important thing is to have that traffic study um, the next time we, we all meet together. Yeah. So July 6th is, is probably a reasonable time, um, and we do need to continue this to a date certain. We can't just continue it indefinitely. Uh, so I would suggest that as soon as you have information on whether that will be ready, Mary, please let us know, and we can choose another date. Sir, I will. But I, 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 I do agree with Rachel for the sake of having these meetings be productive and uh, being able to answer the questions of the neighbors that the traffic study question, the traffic study needs to be uh, part of, of whatever our next conversation is so, and, and quality elevations. Those, those are the two things that I think are really going to uh, move the needle one way or the other uh, and a reputable shadow study as part of those elevations. So I would move we continue this hearing till July 6, 2020. I'll second that. All right, so just move down the line. Ken. Aye. Rachel. Aye. Jean. Yes. David. Aye. Right. And I vote yes. So this meeting, hearing is continued to July 6th at 7 p.m. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. See Thanks you then. So in touch. Bye-bye. All right. <clears throat> um, very quickly, Jenny, do you want to walk us through director's updates to the next item on the agenda? Yes, thank you, Andrew. Um, just very briefly, brief, very brief updates, just to let you know that um, if you if you hadn't already seen this, um, we are not back in the office. Uh, none of the administrative offices are open yet. We're still continuing to work remotely. Um, we're likely to continue remote work for some time, um, certainly up until June 1st, but then likely thereafter. Um, and uh, we are not yet sure exactly when the public uh, will be, the, the town hall will be open to the public. Um, so I think that it's in all likelihood we can anticipate to continue remote meetings for through the summer until we have a good sense of um, 
how many people can convene in a room, what the room setup will be, and a number of other matters that would need to be resolved for people to come back together. Um, so that was the, the primary thing that I wanted to mention. And uh, then second to that is just uh, in terms of my staffing, I am on a, a pretty reduced number of staff. Uh, many of my team are helping with the recovery and response effort right now. So um, I'm working very long hours as part of that. Um, and I am uh, working as hard as I can in relationship to a number of different initiatives. I think a lot of those things we talked about at my last um, update. I don't have any specific virtual forums that are scheduled right now, but I will be letting you know about upcoming opportunities um, to participate in different uh, online engagements at this point. The only thing that we've been doing virtually are surveys, um, sharing information about projects, but we have not yet scheduled any sort of formal engagement opportunity as in like a, a public forum virtually. Um, we are exploring different ways to do that with different projects, but, um, but have not come up with a date, which is why you haven't received anything from me. <laughs> um, but there are a number of surveys that are posted, including uh, David mentioned earlier, the sustainable transportation plan, that survey is active. We are seeking lots of uh, questions from anybody about their what they want to ask us about housing or economic development and have had a lot of questions come to us so far. We also have a survey that's posted in relation to uh, residential design guidelines that have had an enormous response to that, uh, like hundreds of uh, respondents. Um, and uh, there's more to come. So we will continue to engage people that way. And I anticipate that there will be other updates in the future, but wanted to just let you know about the office, staff capacity, and how we're engaging right now. Open to any questions. Yep. Thanks, Jenny. You're welcome. All right, so move on to open forum. Uh, anybody wishes to speak, <clears throat> matters will not be acted on, uh, but raise your hand and uh, I'll call on you and give you the floor and spotlight, so to speak. Have a few minutes for folks to take care of that. I know there's been a lot of discussion this evening. Thank everybody for being constructive and respectful and putting up with Zoom. Actually, I think it's pretty good. All right. Um, I do not see anyone raising their hand for open forum. Going once, going twice. I'm an auctioneer now. All right, uh, I will take a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Ken. Second. Seconded by Gene. Uh, Ken. Aye. David. Aye. Rachel. Aye. Gene. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I appreciate <clears throat> everybody's. Continuing to do this, uh, I actually think this is a pretty good way to, to go about it. Uh, a lot of good input, a lot of faces we don't normally see in person. Uh, and I think uh, that's a positive for getting people involved. So appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Have a good Memorial Day weekend. Stay safe. Wear a mask. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a good night. Everybody. Thank you. Good night.